Welcome to uh, panel five, Undiscovered uh, Northeast. Um, and judging by the turnout, it looks like uh, the, the Northeast is going to remain largely undiscovered, I think. But uh, f for those of you who have come here to uh, discover what's going to happen, thank you very much for, for being here. Uh, we will try to get uh, down to the reasons why Northeast remains undiscovered, although one of them I think we, we, we can see around. Uh, my name is Michał Haczyński. I am uh, the uh, artistic director of uh, Film, uh, of Gdynia Film Festival, which is the Polish national um, film festival organized by the Polish Filmmakers Association and Polish Film Institute. Uh, I'm also a film critic, uh, a journalist, um, and for the past six years I've also been a member in the Polish um, Film uh, Institute of uh, the group of people or of the team that evaluates the uh, production packages which are submitted for uh, production, which are submitted for, uh, for financing. And I've been uh, invited to um, host this panel, I think, for the very simple reason, and the reason is that Northeast remains undiscovered. And I have to say that even for the neighboring countries, I mean, even in uh, Eastern and Central Europe, we do not really know much about each other, about the possibilities that, uh, that are offered and so on. Um, now, the uh, members of this panel, and the panel, let me tell you, is constructed very cunningly, and you will see uh, in a second why. The members of this panel are Ina Lee, who, um, well, who has a CV that if we wanted to get into that, uh, it would probably take us a better part of the time that we have for this panel. So let, let me just say briefly that she started working for German television, uh, producing uh, cultural um, programs, uh, interviews, and so on. Then uh, she moved to the States, where, among others, she, she worked for uh, Ridley Scott Associates, uh, working with Marcus Nispel um, on his... Um, shorter projects, commercials, and uh, feature film. Uh, then she moved back, uh, or at least uh, she started cooperating with uh, the uh, German team, you could say, with Wim Wenders for, uh, for seven years, uh, working on um, longer projects with her. Uh, various companies along the way, um, which I think that if she needs, uh, or if she feels she will want to explain uh, more about this, then she will. Uh, and her part in this panel is uh, the part of some one who is a potential important client, in other words, a producer who might be but not necessarily has to be searching for a place offering a specific kind of um, specific kind of uh, products, offers, services. And on the other side, you might say, of uh, of that equation, uh, we have two representatives of uh, of um, the three countries that we hoped would be represented here. Uh, we have uh, Datsa Leszynska from uh, Riga Film Fund, and here's the connection. Leszynska is a Polish name. Datsa does not speak Polish, but she's of Polish. Polish origin, so uh, it starts to intertwine somehow. Uh, and we have Stan Salover, who is uh, from Estonian Film Commission, Film Estonia EU, and of course uh, represents uh, the festival itself. And I'm saying this is the other side because this is exactly the construction of this panel. We would like to ask the representatives of uh, the Riga Film Fund and the, um, the Estonian Film Commission uh, to start with brief introductions of what the uh, offer, what the situation, what the system connected with the uh, film production is in each of uh, those places. And then we would like uh, to ask uh, Ina Lee to uh, comment on that, to, to somehow maybe evaluate what was presented and then ask uh, about some other areas which perhaps were not uh, mentioned here. So uh, we will start, I think, with um, Datsa. Uh, hello. So I'm from Riga Film Fund, which is a title of Riga City Council co-financing program for foreign productions in uh, Latvia and Riga. In 2010, Riga City Council decided to start a co-financing program with the name to attract uh, to Riga uh, foreign investment. So actually, for the City Council, the main goal was a financial goal. It was um, the time that uh, Latvia was uh, going through the financial crisis, and we needed uh, an instrument how to revive our, our, our economy, because uh, uh, cinema industry has uh, a lot uh, to offer to other industries as well, as foreign crews uh, come live in Latvia, spend there, and sh also the whole shooting process and involving uh, cinema industry in Latvia at that. So 
and we are technically we are giving out um, call financing as um, through the tender. Anyone uh, who has a Latvian partner and a foreign partner, uh, the whole budget of the project should be at least uh, 700,000 euros. And at least 50% of the um, money should be already in place. Then you can apply for the tender organized by the Riga City Council. And basically, up to now, from um, year 2010, uh, we had had um, six uh, tenders, um, during which um, 19 projects were approved. And um, out of those, eight actually have like finished uh, shooting and um, applied for the co-financing because when you apply to the tender, you are um, handing in in the, in the submission your planned budget. And after you are sh uh, have finished shooting, uh, you get the financing based on the actual spend, and uh, you can get up to 20% of a cash rebate of the actual spend. 20% it's uh, if Riga is in a script, at least episodically. And uh, otherwise it's 10%. So in short, it, it would be all. all. About eligible expenses, it's anything that is connected to the shooting, like accommodation, catering, equipment rentals, um, salaries of uh, actors, and so on. So, how many projects you have done? Um, eight has, has finished and handed in uh, reports and had been allocated the money up to now. Although we have the approved 19 projects, but uh, many of them are like uh, just planning to shoot still in the future. So. Some of the projects that were approved uh, moved to another countries. They decided that no, they won't be shooting in Latvia, that they have uh, better conditions somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That's also. So you can't really like say that we've been approving this, uh, that many projects and that many will be shot in Latvia. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is an open panel, right? Any time you need to uh, ask a question to clarify something, then of course, please come up with it. Uh, do you know the countries to which they have moved away? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the projects was um, Iron Sky, Finnish project. Uh, they moved to Australia, as far as I know, <coughs> because there is this. Uh, so they have more snow there, I think. Yeah. And uh, and the other one was uh, also from that year that moved away was um, a Danish project, uh, Royal Affair. <sighs> Because they were considering shooting in uh, Latvia in Rundala Castle, but then they moved, I think, to Prague. It was Prague. Mm -hmm. uh, do you reject projects? I mean, out of uh, how many projects did you choose the ones that you had? Um, right now, we don't. Uh, I mean, we could reject if uh, some of the projects wouldn't fit in within criteria, but up to now, all the projects that, that have been submitted, they fit in in the criteria. Basically, they have been approved. So, so, so that means that the fund is actually either used completely or not used completely, but the fund is sufficient for the number of projects that are coming in, at least right now, right? Right now, yes, but we have a cultural criteria, point system, which uh, makes uh, it, it would be important that it gives priority. So if we have less funds than projects, then some projects would be priority and they would get the financing and up to the point that how much funds we have. Uh -huh. So for but example, it happened this uh, situation. Uh, I understand that obviously the, the rules and the regulations concerning the points are clearly described somewhere. And for example, I, I would assume In amendment, that yes, uh -huh. there is a point system. You can see wh what you get for what. So uh it's basically mathematics. Because also those criteria are either you have it or not. Either you have that much budget, or either you have a Latvian actor in the main cost, or either you have a distribution plan already in place. Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff. Or Riga, shot for Riga instead of pretending to be another city, I guess, would um, be important. That doesn't go into the cultural criteria. That goes to whether you can have 10% and 20%. Ah. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, on the selection basis on priority. Okay. Although those projects that have Riga, they automatically have priority, even if they have less points than 
some other project. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not that I would want to dig up, you know, some dirt on the situation, but uh, obviously, you uh, after the project is done, you have some uh, quality control processes. You verify how the budget they was spent and so report, on. Yes. And uh, can you tell us about, or, or if, if you ever had a situation where it turned out that what the uh, application said turned out to be different, and then you know, in this case, if the funds were taken back. Um, we d uh, that situation that the uh, funds are taken back, no, we, m we go to the estimate and maybe some of the um, like um, positions in the e estimate may change because they don't fit in the uh, time criteria on which the support was mm -hmm. given or something. It maybe it will reduce an amount, but not like re um, rejection or mm -hmm. something. And, and what has your experience been so far? I mean, are the producers coming back to ask you for more money at, at some situation? We've all known producers, or many of you, I hope, are producers, so it's an obvious thing that the producer does. First thing in the morning is how to get more money from someone who has already given me some. Uh, have you had such situations? Well, well, technically, we do it by tender, and it's a very strict law on the tender how it can be done. So they can't really come and ask anything more than it's approved by the tender. Mm -hmm. So that would be illegal. <laughs> Okay, so it's producer proof in a way, uh, I guess <laughs> you could say. Uh, we'll get back to, to uh, many more questions that I think will concern both uh, Riga and uh, Estonia in, uh, in general. So uh, I think we should uh, move to, uh, to Stan. Hello. Uh, how many Estonians? How many Latvians? <laughs> uh, so we're just pitching to each other, it seems, right? Okay, no, no, let's, no, no, let, let's see, how many people from, uh, from outside, rest of Europe? Okay, N now we'll uh, keep an eye contact with you mostly. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes it's, you know, it's, it's a funny story that if you want to meet an Estonian producer, you go meet them in Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but um, I think you've heard pretty much of me. My name is Sten Salover. Um, I'm an industry director and the main organizer of this event. So thank you everybody for coming. Thank you. The great panelists, thank you, Ina. Uh, it's been a great honor. Um, so, I think Estonia is an interesting example where um, where the, fe the, the festival, the film policy, and the film commission actually come together. I mean, um, uh, like us historically, Estonia has taken, like you know, as you know, the usual co-production route that we have had, like the three ways of financing, which is the Ministry of Culture, the Estonian Film Foundation, and the kind of national lottery tax thing. But also in Estonia, as, as many of you know, we have something which is called Enterprise Estonia, which is like a kind of government organization uh, that is uh, pushing out the EU structural funds and also uh, some local money. And historically, their idea also is like economic. It's, um, it's export. And historically, they have like, you know, invested into startups and kind of high industries, but from this year, uh, from January, and the launch was in, in Cannes, uh, they kind of reached uh, the understanding that also film is something that can be seen in economic terms. So and basically, you know, they supported the Film Commission, um, and they also supported the festival. And the uh, idea there would be that also there will be a film fund. But to do that, we need to do pilot projects um, with different parts of the world. So for uh, since Hong Kong, um, I've been traveling around and trying to mostly find Asian projects because we have done so much regional co-production and it's kind of been there, done that. But also in terms of like new experiences, training the crews and also the kind of the star value which we discussed here. Um, I think Asia is, is an interesting uh, territory. And uh, what, we, what we can do is that, uh, although we don't have a tax uh, system right now, or a 20%, I mean, we can cover like, the travel um, of the people here to see what's, what's happening here, to meet network, and also we can invest uh, this kind of money into the productions. So you know, if the crews, crews fly in, hospitality services, and so on. And I mean, in case of the productions, it sometimes makes up the 20%. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, go, go on with uh, the whole, if you can present the whole system, the approach, uh, also relate to some way to the number of films that are produced in Estonia, the uh, possibilities of the system for, uh, you know, foreign co-productions, and of course, w w what, this is something that we have not uh, gotten into yet, of course, I mean, what is in the actual offer, what is, from your point of view, the strong point of, um, of Riga or of uh, Estonia for a foreign uh, producer? One of the strong points of um, Riga, I think, is that it's, um, it, it, it is easy to access it. It's on the main route, on the crossroads, to everywhere, basically. Also, it's... Um, hmm? <laughs> also, it's uh, pretty diverse. I mean, uh, it's not just me saying that, but also the foreign crews that come to Riga comment afterwards that we have a really diverse scenery and many things that you can do in a really like a small area. Um, that's why one of the slogans we have is compact diversity, because you can shoot in one day countryside and the center of the city. You can have medieval, you can have uh, post-Soviet, Soviet, uh, modern, all kind of stuff. And also, since we are so that small and um, compact, we also are pretty fle flexible. And uh, shooting permits are really fast to get. And also, in general, we are cheaper than the rest of the Europe as well. Mm -hmm. So even without the film fund. And also, our crews, local crews, are really good professionals. And um, uh, and also, they are getting better, I mean, with already those projects that they have worked with. So. That would be in Location, in I guess, w would have to be an obvious uh, point in in the conversation, right? Because uh, clearly, the place that can either double for some other place, or the place that looks, uh, let's say, exotic enough, or perhaps featureless enough, depending on uh, on the situation, is uh, is extremely important. Stan, can you comment on that from the Estonian point of view? Location. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was thinking that I was exactly going to say the same thing about. Estonia, as you said about Latvia, but I think... <laughs> I can say about Dublin, Riga can double Paris, London, Berlin. <laughs> yeah, for Tallinn. <laughs> also, I think the old Riga can double for Tallinn as well. Okay, let's have a boxing match afterwards. <laughs> no, but I think uh, something uh, which is very unique about Tallinn and which I firmly believe in is the Asian connection. And this is exactly the idea of the industry days. I mean, we are also, in a way, in the crossroads. I mean, it's nine hours from New York, and it's kind of nine, nine ten hours from Seoul, uh, Tokyo, Beijing, um, Hong Kong. And uh, also, what is for the Asian productions, what we can bring in is that we have a very good Asian studies department in Tallinn. And we have people, you know, who speak Japanese, Chinese, uh, not Korean yet, <laughs> too much. But um, anyway. Um, I speak Japanese, and I think having the ability of translators and you know having this kind of old uh, or the understanding of the cultural mentality, I think this is a very very big uh, thing because, I mean, obviously in the world, um, and it would be very good to hear it from Mina. Obviously, there are places which are like cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, but I think you have to bring you know some kind of unique uh, capabilities in there, um, and also the what um, what also I think helps um, you know. Uh, helps the system is that the festival is here, and you know the festival is is quite well known in Asia. I mean, we have uh, something uh, almost like 25 percent, 30 percent of the festival's programming is is from Asia. We have like premieres, and you know this is a perfect combination where the festival gives credibility, brings in the filmmakers, you know, who can see, and then explore the possibilities. Um, and actually, one of the directors, Kyu Han Zhan, whose film *The Weight* um, is in competition. I mean, you know, parts of the reason that um, I mean he's back here is that uh, when he came with his first film, I think it was about four years ago, he he lo just loved Tallinn, and you know now he's back with his film, but actually he's also doing location scouting, you know, because he wants to make a film in Tallinn. So I mean, this is something that you know, ties, ties it in uh, nicely. I mean, one other thing which hasn't, like, um, been explored, uh, but also relates to the Film Commission, is, is post-production. And um, this is something which I have been personally 
pushing to Japan because post production in Japan is very very expensive, and I mean obviously we have to like diversify between levels of post production, but um, so uh, definitely we are unable to compete with Digital Domain or you know ILM or any of these companies uh, because it's just a question of scale. But there is also you know mechanical sort of post-production, dubbing, and all kind of DCP services. And I, I especially, I, I see DCP service to Asia as, as one of the kind of key areas. And because DCP in Japan is about 20,000 uh, euros. Um, and then, you know, if you, I think if you do it in uh, Taipei, it's something like 6,000. And in Korea, it's, I think, in dollars, 3,000. But in Estonia, it's something like 1,500 euros. And, you know, for a Japanese producer, this seems rather unbelievable. So actually, and we had a pilot in the summer with a documentary uh, on the Osamu Desuka, um, and it's in Japanese distribution. It, it seems to be kicking off. And I think we're finally getting to, to uh, the most important thing, which is the unique points, really. Because uh, from my point of view, for someone who is supposed, or for the production that is supposed to fly from the States or fly from Asia, it doesn't really matter if they will fly for seven hours or eight hours or nine hours. What matters really is what they will get uh, in the place. Uh, I expected uh, before the panel that, of course, we would talk about locations, which is uh, extremely important, that we, talk about, we would talk about price, which also is extremely important. And of course, this is, uh, this is what you're uh, competing with uh, with the rest of the world even between you and uh, yourselves. But uh, I think this is the, the moment to, uh, to ask in Ali to uh, comment on, first of all, what she heard, and second of all, what she has not heard from you. And as a producer, uh, with a long list of international productions and co-productions which were uh, all over the world, which were in, in Venice and Cannes and so on, uh, she knows exactly what she needs. Uh, I think much more than quite often the institutions that offer something to those producers. So enough. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, 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 unfortunately, I have never been to Riga. We'll be going there actually in a couple of days. Uh, this is my first time uh, here in this region. I've scouted it about, um, except for Latin America, I think pretty much every continent uh, for, uh, for the different projects I work on. And um, I think, I mean, unfortunately, a lot of the times it does come down to the price for a lot of projects. Um, but I think it's just, but a lot of the times it's more than that. And every project is different. For every project, you have different needs. So even if, let's say, we're here to scout for a Korean film, actually, right now, we'll be uh, uh, scouting uh, Italian in the next couple of days. Um, it's actually a, a project that's supposed to take place in Finland. And, um, but we don't know what the outcome is going to be. But at the end of the day, I do think it's interesting to find out more about what uh, the place has to offer and what the crew base is like here, what production, uh, um, what the production um, uh, can offer for any future projects too, because it's something that will be in the back of your head. So I think for a place like Estonia, truth be told, in Asia, I think most people won't even know where it is on the map. It's kind of what you know. What gr me growing up in Germany, nobody knew where Korea was, you know, and uh, they didn't even know that that country existed. It's kind of the same thing. Now they know. I think slowly. Thank, thank you, Samsung, you know, for Galaxy Handys okay. and stuff. But it's um, it's really true, I, and I think it's it's about putting yourself on the map. I think it goes also for Riga. You know, if my landlord in America would not have been from Riga, I wouldn't even know where that is either. You know, and I'm from Europe. How sad is that? In case of Americans, any other place is out of the map. So you have to explain, first <laughs> yeah. of all, what continent, and then you go on. Yeah, but I'm embarrassed because I was, you know, I'm German. So, I, you know, like I knew it was like somewhere in the north, but not exactly it's where. It's a lot. You knew already a lot. <laughs> you knew the direction. Yes. But, uh, but, I, but I do think it's... Um, I want to give an example, because uh, in the, uh, in the uh, last couple of years, I've worked a lot with, uh, uh, with Asian countries, and one in particular is Taiwan. And what's interesting about that is it's also a rather new industry. They've had long-time filmmakers like Edward Yang and Ho Shao Xian that were in the festivals, but they never made any business. Nobody ever went to see the movies in Taiwan. And when I went there for my first project, the, um, the uh, Taipei Film Commission had just started. Um, it, uh, 
the GIO, which is the Government Information Office, which is sort of uh, what the national, I don't know what the CNC would be like. Um, and they had just started all their programs and incentives. And what was interesting is that when we went there, there was nobody. There were like three or four production companies, and nobody ever went to see any Taiwanese films. And because of the government's push, and they actually allocated a lot of money um, to the, uh, both the uh, film commissions and the government information office, we were able to get uh, funding and uh, you know, it, 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 those were in forms of grants, not like the regular European fundings where you actually have to pay the money back and it's like, a, you know, it's, it, it's sort of a loan. Um, so that helped us reduce the budget in the end and we got incredible location support. So I think even if the Film Commission doesn't have a lot of money in a way, there's a lot of things that they can do that help us an incredible amount of money. We had all night shoots, we shot on film, and we needed wet downs on every single street. You know, that's usually something that's very expensive and we could not have afforded that anywhere else. The city provided us with water trucks for free. We had a scene in the subway where they gave us a subway for free, and that makes a big difference. You know, it's something that you can do with relationships, and it, you know, it takes off a huge item off the budget. You know, so th those are things that you can do too, but especially in the beginning, I think one thing is you have to be, put yourself on the map, have to make yourself known that you exist, that's really important, meet people, you know, find uh, producers and find uh, directors and writers, and, uh, but also you have to have something that is attractive, either in locations that you have something unique, as uh, you pointed out, or, you know, or incentive, and something that saves you money is always helpful. One of the areas we discussed before uh, we actually started the panel was the kind of productions that uh, each of the countries or of the funds would like to attract. And uh, the question that came up was, are you open to TV series? Uh, yeah, so we are. Um, the only that uh, they has, it has to be at least one series has to be a feature length. Mm -hmm. That's um, like a starting out point. Otherwise, uh, we actually owe those eight projects, um, let me see, forward TV series mm -hmm. to be supported. So yes, they are welcome, as well as documentaries and features, of course. Mm -hmm. Stan? Uh, I'd like to say yes, but I will say no. Because I mean, I mean, this is exactly interesting thing where like Estonia and Latvia and industry a little bit goes on the way. Because I mean, many of you know that. I mean, out of the three Baltic countries, Estonian film system is probably like the most developed. But at this, but we're so attached to Finland and the Nordic countries that you know we don't have really like the inf infrastructure. So I mean, one of the worst. <laughs> worst decisions that was, was made was actually like uh, destroying the Estonian film pavilions, you know, which, which actually in, in Riga, you know, came on board from the Soviet time. And I think, you know, in terms of that kind of, if you don't have that kind of in infrastructure yet, I mean, it is coming. And, you know, people use warehouses and all that kind of stuff for, you know, uh, sound stages. But at the same time, this is, a, you know, this kind of infrastructure is, is a big requirement for, for television work. So I, I hope it will, it will come later. And also, I mean, the range of projects that I am looking is maybe something like, you know, kind of independent films, you know, in a maybe a range of like three million dollars or something like this, where I exactly the location is, you know, the biggest, biggest in mm -hmm. um, incentive. Mm -hmm. But I, I, but I definitely, you know, like what you mentioned before that location is one thing, but you of course are coming up to 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 build uh, part of the industry. So post production, could you say that post production is the element for for the uh, Estonian uh, location that that it should actually or could bring in uh, foreign productions in a sense that somebody comes in and of course you have the locations, but it is also possible to start working on some of the materials immediately on the set, uh, well, in, on the place in the place. Yeah, yeah, I, I think. I I mean, one of the biggest, obviously, it's not like very super, as I said, digital domain or ILM level, but there, there are various levels. And I mean, interesting cases is that it's very sad that he's not here, but we have the Kallas brothers, uh, you know, who is, who is a very interesting, they were just like two brothers mega interested in post and technology. And they took this, um, like, way before Red was made, they took this Indian camera chip, this SA2K, and started kind of fooling around it. And obviously, the first camera was like a piece of you know, but uh, the end result is that because it's very compact and it gives good picture, then the, uh, the actually the cave of forgotten dreams, 
was you know shot shot with this rig, um, and they also did the stereoscopic post for it. And you know now they have their post house in um, in Poland, by the way. Mm -hmm. But I mean it, it's an example that you know you you just for the post to kick off, you don't necessarily have to buy a you know house full of like silicon graphics. And I mean what I'm also trying to talk to the Estonian people, there's Uku who is one of the Estonian post producers, by the way, is that also that um, the industry should really like differentiate. You know, mm -hmm. Estonia could be the land of TCP. I'm saying it after a problematic festival when we had a lot of issues with TCP, but <laughs> but I mean it's, it it partly kind of ties um, ties ties into that. So and also mm -hmm. like sound mix and dubbing and all all these kinds of uh, things. Frankly, I think this is exactly the direction. I mean, and specialize sorry, in specific area apart from the locations and the price, of course. Mm -hmm. And I mean, one last thing is that where I think. Uh, Estonia could be very competitive it is something uh, relate, related to film digitalization and film restoration and I mean it kind of you know it ties into because with the conversion to the DCP and you know throwing out the projectors I mean there is a vast amount of like directors work even from the recent times you know that has to be you know digitalized yeah. and, and done and this is what we've been already doing so or if film you know if there are still films shot on film mm. which I so hope <laughs> On a side note here, the DCP <coughs> problems that uh, happened here at the beginning, it happens everywhere now, every single, this year uh, practically every festival that you went to had some problem with DCP because this is really the year when suddenly the number of DCP films, you know, sprung up from 10% to, to, I don't know, 50, 60% of, uh, of what you're showing. Uh, Stan has mentioned uh, a title, The Cave of Forgotten Dreams, that was made with uh, Derek, he, he was uh, talking about, and of course we're talking about the undiscovered area. Uh, one of the ways to, to, to discover, to at least make it possible to, to discover yourself is, of course, to boast of a production that you have uh, concluded, had, and so on. Can you give us uh, a couple of titles of uh, the films that either were produced or are being produced in your area now? The, the type of projects, at least. Well, all the projects that have been recently like uh, seen in uh, festivals, uh, one of them, like mentioned already several times here, is uh, South Korean uh, My Way. Uh, the D Day in Normandy was sh shot in Latvia. When I heard that My Way was shot in Latvia, I almost felt that my teeth, I was following my teeth. The, the competition between you is becoming unhealthy, <laughs> I think. But the, one of the reasons why the, re the region remains undiscovered is there's no cooperation, and I think we have to touch on that in a second. Uh, mm, the other one... Just kidding. <laughs> uh, also, actually, from South Korea, is I d I'm just not sure about the title. We file. Yes, because we had it as an in Berlin, so I'm not sure which one. But uh, also, South Riga was uh, doubling for Berlin uh, in some parts of it. And um, in Cannes competition this year, there was a um, co-production uh, uh, in the fog. It was uh, shot in uh, Latvia completely, and. Um, and Latvia is one of the co-producers. Co uh, if we can speak about the other projects there, Latvia was a production service. This, this one was when Latvia was also a co-producer. Mm -hmm. Okay, Stan? Um, yeah, there are, there are a couple of um, couple of things um, in the works. I mean, one is. Uh, the project why why you know is here for for lo location scouting another Korean film we seem to like Koreans and then there is the Kyuhan film uh, then there is one um, Canadian um, horror film a genre film in a with a budget of half a million dollars um, which is right now in the script assessment uh, to see whether it uh, it gives a uh, cost advantage and there is actually a Japanese film which is a very big Japanese studio film that wants to shoot uh, Russia. But I mean, obviously, for a Japanese crew to go to Russia is a very, very bad idea. I mean, even if there would be much money, like mm. the whole cultural system doesn't work out. So it's about six, seven projects which are in, in various stages in development. But I mean, considering that we started doing this in, in March, I think it's, uh, I think it's been good, good energy. Mm -hmm. Quite seriously, to touch upon the uh, competition and cooperation uh, topic, um, 
It does seem quite obvious that uh, if you're a small player, in a sense that if you're undiscovered, if you're a relatively small country, and uh, that there's a couple of you, there are there's three of you, uh, it would be quite obvious that in some cases it is much better to cooperate, to bring in productions, sometimes simply to show off what you can do, what you can uh, offer, rather than comp compete against each other. Do you have cases in the past where you uh, actually cooperated rather than competed for a specific production and do you have any plans of that is there a platform or a concept of such cooperation of course it's I would say impossible if you think about locations because you either should film here or there but uh, from the point of view of, uh, of what's then mentioned before which is for example post-production where it's practically impossible with larger productions to just do it in one specific company always need to spread out that seems like a possible thing to do well, Sorry, if we speak about like um, like official co-production or some agreements, that's another situation. But I mean, uh, technically, like in doing the projects, it's uh, been co uh, cooperation all the time because the crews are usually made up from uh, people from all the three Baltic states, very often at least. So. In uh, technically making a project, it is a uh, cooperation already. Okay. Yes, of course. <laughs> no, but I think um, I I am actually very uh, happy. Uh, you know, what happened in Riga is that obviously it's in, in some respects it is a blow, but at the same time it is a very, very good example to follow. Because, I mean, when the Riga Film Fund started is that, I mean, I think nobody had an expectation that something like this would come. And, you know, it's, uh, yeah, in Estonia we have a little hardline tax policy. And, I mean, everybody, you know, as I said, understand that, yes, we need the fund. But, you know, if the government has, uh, has basically said that, you know, we don't give any subsidies to anybody, you know. So, but, you know, having these examples in our region and not somewhere far, far away in another galaxy, right, it, it's, it's a very, very good act of encouragement. And especially considering the level of, um, of projects that have come in. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Um, I actually have a note on the uh, uh, on my way, for example, because I actually did work on the uh, very first stages of when they were trying to decide uh, where to do that production. And I remember having a talk. Um, they were only because it was set in Berlin, and uh, they were not even considering Eastern Europe at all because they didn't know, you know. And I said, "Why don't we shoot this in Eastern Europe? It is much cheaper." And they're like. Really? Why? You know, don't understand. And then, um, and then, uh, because they didn't even know what it looked like. And then, after doing all that research, we actually went to like six different countries in Eastern Europe, and then they ended up uh, shooting in Latvia. But the thing is, and after that, because of that experience, you know, they're all. It's a very small industry in Korea. You know, they went and spoke to the people who went to Berlin, and I think the Berlin Fire was a much better and a more smooth experience because they already had one. But it's already very yeah. close to Estonia. You know, so like once you've had that, it's like a big hurdle that you've ha had a production there. And I think that changed the mindset of a lot of people in Korea, you know, so that helps. Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, one of my questions to you now is, uh, which, I, which kind of ties in is to that, uh, it, we talked about uh, earlier early also is that I think, um, you know, the pr producer's capabilities are a little bit different in, in this region and in Asia because, like, my impression is that, like, the Asian producers work more and work more effectively. I wouldn't say that. You know, I think that's very hard because, you know, they also drink more, you know, <laughs> and <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's just very, you remember, right? <laughs> so, um, I, I don't know. I don't know if there's efficiency. I think it's, they work in a different style. You know, and like the, you, ha and, and and I think that's something that everybody needs to know and learn. You know, us for you know when we go and shoot at a different location and in a different cultural environment. But also, if you invite people and work, try to work with somebody from another culture, Asians are not all the same. Like the Japanese and the Koreans are vastly different, and so are the Chinese. But you have to know certain things about how they work. And I think once you know and you have that information, you can either work with it or work around it. Mm -hmm. For example, Koreans always come in bulk. They never travel alone. You know, so the director has always like you know four or five directors assistants. You know, who are, but it's what they need. 
Like they need that, like even if we look down upon it, it's something that they need to be able to work at their best. You know, and then so you know that you will have more people traveling and coming in. So living cost is something that's super important for a Korean crew, for example. And I think the Chinese are pretty much similar. They could not go and, and just send the director and the DP and you know one other person and then work with the local crew. That's something that's unacceptable. The good thing is they share rooms. Westerners don't do that. You know, you can sometimes put four or five people in an apartment and they're happy as long as they have ramen. You know, so it's you know also make you know Asian food accessible somehow. You know, ship it in ramen and a, you know a pot of kimchi is usually enough. You know, we have a Korean restaurant. See, very important. That was a very big thing while scouting. Is there an Asian food store? <laughs> you know, it's you know those are little things, but but you know that make up all the difference. You know, and it's it's so if you know that you can put five people in a room, you know, it's you can save on room costs. I mean, those are all things to consider. This is exactly the kind of comment I meant at the beginning that uh, a producer looks very often from a completely different perspective than the institutions that offer something. Uh, about uh, someone, you know, drinking more or less, let me just comment that, you know, a car that goes faster also needs more fuel, so, you know, th things. Mm. You want to change physics, you know, but things, I think, things yeah, work like that. Some of the student producers um, and, let's say, film people uh, need to learn how to drink <laughs> from Koreans. Yeah, well, uh, it might happen. Um, one more question which um, I think is connected with uh, the sort of mismatch between what institutions uh, want to offer and what the producers want to have is the fact that a specific financing scheme assumes some cultural test. Sometimes you need to show the city for the actual city, not uh, you know something else. Sometimes you're forced to use some of the local crew, whereas of course the producers never want it. Uh, could you comment on that from from your side? I mean, to, to the question to Ina is: uh, to what extent is it something that would stop you from actually getting into uh, into Riga or, or, or into Tallinn to to make a film? And also to you, the question is: to what extent do you require that from the productions? I don't require anything. <laughs> no, obviously, Just obviously. Just come in and work, that's uh, it. No, I think since we are in the pilot year, um, I try to be, like, my ideology or feeling about it is really let's find different and diverse projects to work in, because it's also a very good way. Uh, but projects, you know, which have, I wouldn't say A-class potential, but definitely some festival, uh, festival pot potential. And, I mean, if you have that goal in mind, because also this kind of production, it can be a very good encouraging thing uh, for the film industry. You know, yes, you know, we made it because obviously film festivals are about politics. You know, and uh, I mean, I, you know, some Estonian films have travelled, but you know, generally speaking, you know, who cares about the Estonian film? I mean, you know, in a, in a kind of, you know, it, at the very big festival uh, circuit, if um, you know, if the film isn't like super amazing, but at the same time, if you engage in this kind of cooperation, you know, production servicing, and maybe the producer also goes in as a co-producer, and obviously, you know, some certain Asian territories are very, very hot. I mean, yesterday, what we talked about postcards is that you know, it's a small Indonesian film. You know, and having obviously, you know, having like an Estonian producer or a post producer in that film, you know, it's it's attractive, and you can, you know, it opens up also new funds in Europe, like the Hoover Pulse and so on. Plus, you know, it's an upgrade. So, yeah, these are my. So no requirements uh, on the Estonian uh, side or part, whereas uh, in case of Riga, we, we've heard of some levels possible. <laughs> Well, it's more like not a requirement, but an encouragement. I mean, you can get more if you include that, but it's not like you can't get anything if you don't do that. Mm -hmm. So it's just that we are, our, uh, Riga as a city is interested also like to promote tourism and everything. Um, because of that, we would love to see Riga, but Im even the whole movie hasn't have to be about Riga. It can be just one episode, so I don't think it's really like a requirement. It's more a, a wish. Yeah. Well, I mean, from what I hear actually about Riga, and I said you don't seem to have any hard requirements at all. So, and if you ask a producer, 
obviously I don't want any restrictions. You know, if you ask me, like, no, I don't want any. But I understand where they come from and sometimes why they have to exist. I do think that it's very important that you, uh, that the local, uh, uh, um, the, the local industry actually has an advantage of when you actually uh, when when you help productions, but I um, also think that sometimes what I find the most difficult is when there are too many restrictions on the creative side, like when you actually um, like in terms of locations and you know production crew. I think you can make pretty much everything work, but there are a lot of countries, but they can afford it because they're richer, where they actually uh, uh, require a director or writer to be of a certain nationality, and that is a huge restriction. I th I find that I think sometimes it's just not possible, or we had this one case when sometimes tourism boards get involved. It, you know, basically, it, it, you know, they like required, instead of the director being able to choose anywhere, which, you know, they're like, well, you have to include a golf course. And he's like, why would I include a golf course? Because it's like, there's no golf in the story. But so they ended up not doing it, you know, and those are like, I mean, that's kind of extreme, but I think when the less uh, creative those uh, um, restrictions are, I think that you will allow for a lot more projects. And uh, one other example is, uh, for example, like television. It is ex excluded in, uh, in several tax credit uh, systems um, specifically, and I think that is frankly stupid because some of the biggest productions now are television productions because it's so hard to finance films. And a lot of Asian productions are actually, you know, TV productions that get bigger and bigger. So I think that's a, it's a whole source of income that you're excluding. I can understand why you exclude commercials. That's a whole different mm -hmm. um, area. But I think TV series should definitely be considered. All right, we're slowly running, running out of time, and there was uh, just one question from the room at the beginning. I assume that there might be more, uh, unless, okay, go on. Some question to Stan. Uh, do you know of anything that Estonia is currently doing to, um, uh, to become more interesting ground for foreign uh, film productions? Is your um, um, city municipality or the government working on some sort of Incentive scheme similar to that same like in Riga? Similar or unique? Um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's been on the table for a very long time. But I mean, as I said, unfortunately, um, our government has taken a certain, you know, tax, tax stance and, um, uh, you know, I have to give like a politically correct answer. <laughs> No, but but I think you know it's 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 um, it's going towards that direction, and you know if there will be a change in the government, I think it will actually happen um, happen very soon because everybody kind of understands. But I also understand that in a grant, if you're you know given a promise to your voters, and obviously the question the question is then is that you know if it happens in film, it does have to happen everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, with the city, uh, the city, uh, the fund has been also in the discussion. Um, it was again taken off the table. I just got the email on Friday, but uh, we're pushing it again for the for the autumn. So um, you know, it, it it might happen quite soon. So not in this budget, but perhaps in the next. Yeah, one, and, right? and I mean, considering that you know things might happen in half a year, and mm. I mean there is already things what I what I do right now, and we, as I said, we can help by by you know different different means. I'm, you know, the, the fact if the fund is there or if it's not there, it's not right now very important because developing projects takes time and, you know. Mm -hmm. I just want to say we wouldn't be here actually without you guys inviting us over here. I think uh, if, if it was the initiative of the producer alone to like, pay for the scout and everything, and there was, you know, but this made it a very affordable scout, so we could actually fly the director and, and the line producer and uh, two producers, and that's a huge help. You know, that's actually pretty great. Yeah, I just wanted to add that the whole concept of um, putting it together with the festival obviously works in such a way that you, you sometimes you just come in somewhere for a completely different reason, but then you realize that uh, the benefits of coming also come from a different area. All right, more questions from the room, please? Perhaps there are... Oh, okay. Question to Ina, like, what do you think are going to be deciding factors for the complete project or the scouting for it? Are you going to come to Estonia or not? Well, that's a, you know, it, it really depends on the project. And uh, we're here with the director, and he had originally uh, uh, written this for Finland. Mm -hmm. And 
because he didn't even know Estonia existed, to be frank. And now he was, uh, he, so he, he, you know, he said it's important that you come. So we actually spent two days in Helsinki. We're here. We're also going to Riga. So thanks to Estonia, we see all the other places too. And uh, but I think the deciding factor is if it doesn't work with the story. That's the most important thing. You know, I think we need to support him in that way. And uh, but so far we'll see. I mean, we'll see after the two days. I think. To be very honest, in terms of price, Estonia is cheaper than Finland, but is more expensive than Latvia. And uh, that is always going to be a factor. So it, it depends on what else you can uh, bring on the table. And uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll see. But uh, the creative actually is a very important issue too. So I mean, so far it's been very good, but the actual scouting days are starting tomorrow. When are you leaving for Riga? I just wanted to find out how many days you still have left, you know, to convince them. Well, we're here, uh, we're here for two more days, and then we're going to Riga on uh, Thursday. I'm getting scared. <laughs> no, but actually making, making a comment about this, that, you know, that the, the, the presence of the fund is not necessary. I think um, exactly like what we've organized um, here is, is a good chance because I think like project markets generally for me, you know, are going little down, but you just have to have like, you know, invite the right people because I mean, why, why they are also here is that, uh, you know, Jungwan, the other, other producer and who was talking yesterday, I mean, he came to Tallinn uh, exactly one year ago Christ, uh, for a project called 60 Seconds, which uh, I produced with 60 filmmakers. And then, you know, we were just having dinner and talking that, you know, there is something about, you know, taking place in Finland. And I said that, you know, but why not in Estonia? And there it, there it kind of went, right? Well, one little anecdote. I mean, we came over here with the ferry on the Talensk, and they were so friendly to us. And uh, the director g uh, got a taste of the old Tallinn, that you know, forty percent alcoholic drink, and he's like, "I need to write something on this ferry." <laughs> so, and then we went to the old town. It was like, similar. So, I think you know, you get an inspiration. Maybe, maybe it's not for this film, but he definitely will put it on the back. He was really, he was, he was in love with this place. <laughs> Last chance, I think, to uh, ask a question and give a comment, since I know that we have producers from Latvia here as well and uh, producers from Estonia. Uh, some of you might comment on what you need from the institutions as well. Money. Money. They're satisfied. So uh. <laughs> no, yeah. Actually, actually, one more thing which I which I totally forgot is that what, what is a very good uh, you know bonus of Estonia is music. Mm -hmm. And this is something, you know, that kind of goes always off the track, but Estonia has such a rich classical music tradition and, um, you know, it's another example of, of how stuff happens because when I was in summer in, uh, in Jury in Puchon Film Festival and then I met the Korean Producers Guild again on a dinner and they said that it's r right now quite difficult in Korea, you know, to get uh, music with, you know, a good price because there's also some, you know, author's right question and then, you know, I had, aha, but... I would actually never thought about this, that, you know, this could work. And I mean, I've got some great feedback about the yesterday's showcase. I mean, the composers are very satisfied and, you know, some of the, the guests have also already picked up some things. So this is actually which could also, I don't know why film music is never like considered to be a kind of a, you know, thing related to a film, but, you know, it, it can travel easily. You know, there is low cost entry and so on and so on. So this can be also developed quite, quite well. But I think this is also a good coda to the whole conversation. I mean, it's, it's, it is obvious, absolutely obvious that the first uh, two things that such conversation or such panel always starts with is the price, we're cheaper, and so on, uh, and is the locations. We have places that can double for others or are unique, but then it, step by step you get to points where sometimes the place, the country, or the city realizes that it can offer something completely unique but absolutely needed in a film. Like the comment about uh, film score is, is absolutely priceless in this case. Uh, in our cultural test, you can get more points if you have a local mm -hmm. uh, score. So. What I mean is that those, those tests or those surveys quite often say that if you use local element, of course, you will get more points. But the thing is that people do not know quite often what kind of local element uh, at the very high level of quality they can get, of course. Right? I, th uh, I mean, that is like an uh, encouragement for them to find out sure. that maybe they can like shoot two birds with one stone. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, absolutely, that is true. Okay, I think our time has run out. So uh, thank you very much to those of you who came in to uh, discover. As you have noticed, Lithuania remains completely undiscovered, right? Because uh, uh, Jurate Pazikaita could not uh, visit us, but uh, I think with the two other... Con oh, one more comment. Yeah. Actually, uh, I forgot to actually uh, say, I, I, um, I described what, uh, what Taipei was like in the beginning, or Taiwan, but now, like five years later, they have so many productions, they have, um, and I think it's, uh, it's a rise of almost 15% of local, um, like, uh, local films and cinemas that people go to see, like in the box office. That's huge, from under 5% to, I think, uh, you know, to almost 20%. And, the, and you have experience crew, bilingual crew now, you know, Ang Lee shot Life of Pi there. You couldn't have done that, I think, without uh, the experience that they gathered over the last five years. It's because, you know, all of that actually was due to uh, that push that the government gave towards, you know, investing into uh, films, and it really paid off. And it's a big industry now. If you go there now, it's a completely different picture. And all the mainland, um, mainland Chinese uh, companies now come, and also investors, because it's Chinese language. They speak Mandarin there, and, the, and they, don't, they have a lack of talent, like directors. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> they um, actively invest, and it's, it's pretty big. It's good. Now, that was actually a, an even better coda for the whole conversation. It's doable, it's possible, it's been done before, and I hope you do not have to speak Mandarin to actually achieve that. So, uh, <laughs> thank you very much uh, for all, everybody in the room. Thank you to the panelists. Thanks.